Well, welcome back to another uh, lifestyle video on my personal YouTube channel. I'm Pastor Michael. For those of you that are joining me for the first time, what I'm doing is remodeling a uh, guest bedroom in my house. and This is the uh, last uh, room that I have left to remodel in my trailer house. And so I'm doing a step-by-step uh, -step playlist. Um, if you've seen my last uh, video in this uh, trailer house step, you know that I applied the first coat. Well, now what we need to do is we need to sand it down. So basically what I do is I've got a big old um, pole sander. It works uh, better than the sanding block or sandpaper. But uh, this is a, uh, <clears throat> a wire drywall sand um, screen. So you can um, hook that into the back of your block thing there. So what I do is if you do a a good job on putting the mud on the wall you don't have to do so much work on uh, um, sanding it down that's why I, it's critical that you understand that so basically what I do is uh, I just go over really lightly as you can see right there these flat seams. Do your corners. And any uh, nail holes that you might have filled in, just come across it. So you'll be putting uh, two more coats of drywall mud on there. So anywhere you have done that, let me show you this corner over here real fast. And this corner is, uh, has some shrinkage in it. Okay, that's what happens when you only do one coat. So again, you wanna just do a light sanding over those edges, knock those ridges down. Then uh, look it over, make sure that uh, you're ready for your second coat of mud. And what I like to do is sweep my wall. You can uh, open a window, wear a dust mask if you want. I'm not doing that much uh, sanding because my room is uh, pretty much smooth from knowing how to do this for many years. So let me get a broom and uh, let's uh, sweep the walls off. You can use a duster too, one of those little fluffy dusters. But Broom is falling apart. Just everywhere where you sand it down, just go ahead and sweep that off. That's all there is to it. I'll be back in a little bit to show you how I start my second coat of mud. And when it comes to applying the uh, second coat of mud, it's just pretty much the same way as the first coat, except for the second coat is done with a little bit wider knife. And I also uh, thin down the mud as I did in my uh, video that I did on finishing the uh, skylight hole in my ceiling. So what I like to do is uh, I like to show you how I mix the mud. I'm gonna put the camera on the ground so you can see the bucket of mud. And then I'll do one um, seam in one corner on uh, video here so you can see what that looks like. 
Basically, it's just a repeat of the other ones, the other coats, just with wider knives as you go out. So I'll be showing you that. But let's uh, mix up the mud. The reason we want to do it this way is because we've got a room to do instead of just a small patch. If it's just a small patch, I would just mix my uh, mud and my water up in my, in my pan here. I would just put some water in there and mix it up. But being as I've got to do all the joints and the seams in this room in the corners, I want to mix up some more wetter mud. So let me show you how I do that. So what I have is my bucket of mud. Let's go ahead and uh, get started here. And so as you can tell, this mud is a uh, pretty firm, okay? We want it to be almost like a milkshake. Right now it's almost thicker than pancake batter. It's almost like a paste. So we're gonna mix it with this and uh, you wanna just control your speed to go really slow. What I do is I put it down in there, make sure I've got enough power to mix it. And you can get started a little bit. I'm just gonna use some basic water, dump my water in there. About, a, I don't know, an inch or so in there. You get it down in that thickness too much and then your, uh, your gun will just sit there and, and not like what you're doing to it. If your porter drill starts making that sound, it means that you're uh, trying to mix too heavy of the mud. Now you see the idea. You want it to just barely drip off of there. So I'm probably going to use pretty much of this whole uh, cup in here because I've got a lot to do. I've got the third coat to do as well. Don't push your trigger all the way because you'll make a mess all over the place. Then the wife will get upset because she has to clean up the mess. Or maybe she'll make me do it. That's okay too. See, the more water, the better that the, that the drill works. All right, now let's uh, check it. See, I uh, put it down in there too far. Now we got a big old mess, as you can see. See, I want it so it's starting to come off like that. See how it's dripping? Clean off your tool. Grab your knife. You want to either set this in a bucket of water or you want to go clean it off. So you don't want all that to get dry on there because it makes it harder to clean it up afterwards. And as you can tell, I got some mud all over the floor, so I got to clean that up too. So I'll be back in a few minutes to show you how I put this on the wall. It got a little uh, tad messy, but I got the floor cleaned up. So we're in here with uh, my second coat um, knife. 
this was my first one. This is my second one. First one, second one. So it's going to feather it out just a little bit. Like I said, the procedure is basically just the same. You just use some thinner mud. I've already uh, set up in this corner with the camera. So I'll go ahead and uh, show you how I do that. Let's go ahead and start at the top. And here we can hit two areas at one time. have your mud bucket kind of close by. Yep, you can see that pretty good. I come around this edge and just knock that off. You could put it on and then come straight down with your tool as well. That usually helps it too. You're just trying to fill in that void. If you put your knife like this and you look at it, I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not, but there's just a little bit of a void there. That's what I'm trying to fill in. I'm trying not to get air bubbles to come out. Try to smooth those air bubbles out because you'll have a hard time trying to finish it out later. This is going to drip off your wall. And that's okay. Just, just let it do its thing while you're doing your thing. Okay. And when you press down on it for your final run, try to press down towards the outside edge of your, of your corner. Let me show you a little bit. What I do is I, I'm pressing down on this side of my, my knife a little harder than I am towards the outside edge. And that's what takes that off. Now you're hurt hearing the cat in the other room. The joy of owning cats. Remember when I said you could get two areas at one time? This is the area I'm talking about. Again, you just want to apply that mud to the thickness of your tool. It's really not my most finest hour of what I enjoy doing. But if you uh, take the necessary steps and be patient with it, it'll eventually work out the way you want it to. You have to ignore those sounds around you, ignore what the cats are doing. Sometimes it's very, very irritating. That's why I have a a ministry channel that helps me to refine my heart because there's certain things in my life that can get me down if I'm not uh, on top of it. That cat's probably talking to her toys or something. Mama's not here right now, so... any debris in your knife other than the drywall mud you're gonna have that visible crack going the whole way so you got to make sure that you have a clean knife the whole time don't worry about that mud falling off you can clean it up later feather it out and it'll get a Sand it down too, just like I did that 
first coat. Easy plan a good week if you're going to finish out a room. Because after you do this, we've got a texture, we've got a paint. So it takes time to, to get all that done. So again, I'm pushing down towards the feather edge away from that corner. All right. It's about removing the mud from the area you're working against. So take your time. In the second coat, you should be able to cover up that tape and not see it at all in your second coat. Take your time, be patient. If you need to take a frequent breaks, then just finish a corner or finish your pan of mud, and then uh, you can get back to it. But if you try to rush through it, it's gonna look like that in the end result. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, second coat this whole room. I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Talk to you in a little bit. Well, I'm done with the second coat of mud. It's been a uh, tough time, I guess, uh, because I have a disability, a nervous system injury. But as I look around this room, uh, it's the second coat. It's not the finished coat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the camera around, change the direction of it. And I'm going to show you what the room looks like right now. It's still wet. We haven't sanded it down yet. So let's check out what the second coat of mud looks like uh, in the wet stage. Well, as you know, that's where I started out when you were watching me do that. So it's pretty, pretty wide. I don't worry too much about those, uh, the rough uh, scene, the rough areas there. We do it thin enough. You can sand that down and it'll look just fine. So make sure you get your nail holes. Make sure you get all the way down to your seams. And there's that seam. Remember, we're going to put a uh, shower access panel right there. Here's this corner. I just barely got it done. Cause I don't worry too much about the, the roughness. I'll sand it down and put a, another third coat on there. If the corner seems to need more mud, do a fourth coat, do a fifth coat. There's a little splotch right there. I'll uh, work that after it sets up a little bit. I don't do next to the jam all the way because that door is going to have casing on both sides of it that is going to go all the way to the corner. So I do the best that I can. And uh, there's that seam. It's starting to dry, as you can see. So my friends, when you're uh, finishing an out drywall, just take your time. If you need uh, frequent breaks, take frequent breaks. Uh, make sure you clean out your, uh, your, uh, your knife and your bucket that you're using your mud out of. I clean out probably out of every three joints. So don't put so much in here where uh, you can't take the time to finish it out and wash it up. It's uh, gonna be a better job if you take the time to clean in between seams. Don't try to do a whole room at one time. That's, that's a good point that I could say. Like I said, keep your tools clean all the time because uh, once the drywall mud uh, dries, it'll pick up little chunks. If you uh, happen to pick up a piece of carpet, it'll it'll put a crease in your uh, drywall mud work too. So make sure you keep, keep your uh, surface clean, keep your tools clean, and uh, you'll be able to do a good job. We'll be coming back in the next video. I'll uh, sand it down and we'll be doing the third coat. We'll be taking a look to see how everything looks. Until then, my friends, may God bless you. May his face shine upon you and may Jesus always bring you joy. I'll see you in step three of the third coat of mud.